What is going on everybody? Today we are going to take a look at Leighton Vandresh and really analyze his take from the first four games of this season. You know a lot of people question if Vandresh needs to be replaced and I don't want to give you guys that answer. You know I think that's everybody's opinion as if they need to be replaced or not but I'll go ahead and really summarize what I think and then we'll use the tape to kind of back that up. Uh, I think Vandresh has taken a step downwards. I think he is not as quick as he was four years ago. That happens. Linebackers, as they get older, as they play more years in the NFL, they naturally slow down. But the one thing that happens with linebackers as the seasons go on is they get smarter. They recognize patterns quicker. They're better in analyzing tape and knowing what offensive linemen are trying to do. And they're easily able to jump the gap and make these type of plays. You know, it's part of why Ray Lewis, even in his final year, was making play after play after play. And we've seen it with guys like Patrick Willis. And now we're seeing it with the Mandrashes of the world right? He's still a good, smart, high IQ football player. Yes, he's taking a step downwards. And I don't think the Cowboys are going to replace him this season. Maybe not even next season. We'll see as that time actually comes. And also, you got to have that replacement. Because I'm not 100% sold that Damone Clark is better than Mandarish right now. Like I'm not sold on it, right? So I'm very fired up to get into the tape. Let's jump right into it. So I'm going to show you guys some of the negative plays of Mandarish from the first four weeks of the season to really sum up what it is that people are holding against Van Der Esch. Uh, This one right here is going to be a nine-yard run by Ezekiel Elliott. And Van Der Esch does make the tackle, right? But I think most people could agree that making a tackle after a yard or two is different than after a nine-yard run. And on this play here, you can see that the running back's going to pick up nine yards. Now, to me, within this play, you can recognize that Van Der Esch, from a mental perspective, is able to read and react quickly, right? He knows exactly which gap he needs to be in. He plays it perfectly from the outside and as the running back's gonna try to cut it back, he's gonna get back over here to the left. That's exactly how you wanna play this. Also, I need to make it clear, the defense is in a light box. So no matter what the defense does, there's just not enough guys for every single gap. There'll always be at least one gap that is unblocked, which means one of the linebackers has to be able to take two gaps on or at least try to make a play. And teams do this on first downs a whole lot. The Cowboys definitely do it. But in this play, you clearly see that Van Der Esch, although he's not blocked, just isn't quick enough over the top to tackle Zeke. Right? He's not quick enough to make the play. Now, when you utilize the light box the way Dan Quinn is here, you're okay with giving up four yards. You'll take that. That's actually a win on first down if you're utilizing a light box because the hope is just that you can get in a third and one or third and two and get off the field. Right? You want to limit the explosive plays. Teams do this all the time, and it's a scheme that's definitely worked and proven effective, but you need guys to make the plays. You need guys to be able to play multiple gaps, be quick enough, right, left, right, left, and make the play. And in this one, Van Der Esch didn't make the play. And this is not the only time we've seen this kind of happen, right? Here's another example. This one hit for 20 yards. Again, Van Der Esch reads it perfectly, right? From a mental perspective, he is fantastic. I mean, he's one of the smartest players today on the Dallas Cowboys, and I think that's very, very clear. But from a physical standpoint, he's just not able to run through this. Now, 72 does do a great job. He utilizes what is called a slingshot block. Some people will say it's a hold. It is not a hold, but you do use leverage against these linebackers. And in this instance, the center does a great job pulling with the left hand, getting to the backside, pushing with the right hand, and ultimately blocking out Van Der Esch. But to me, this is a block that four years ago, Van Der Esch would have jumped through here and he would have blown this running back up. And now he's just half a step too slow, right? And I don't, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say he's a half a step too slow. He's just not able to make certain plays. And it happens, right? Again, we'll get into plays that he does make. A lot of really, really positive plays a little bit later on, but I do want to just set this video up to show you guys what people are saying about the inside linebacker here. Right. People are going to make these comments. And, you know, when I say people, I'm talking about Cowboys fans. Right. They're saying he's just a little bit too slow. He's not able to get there quick enough. Here's a play in which Zach Wilson takes off running. Van Der Esch takes the wrong angle. uh, And this one's a 12 yard gain. And to me, again, he takes the wrong angle on this one and he's just not quick enough to recover. You can tell as soon as the quarterback's going to take off running, he's going to run straight at the quarterback and then he's going to change his angle within that. Right. Again, this one's not as big of a deal because Zach Wilson is fast. But then there's another play, which is this one here. And the Cowboys are in a cover three. So with that, you got the two 
defenders on the inside who are really covering the mid hooks. And that also means that if the running back leaks right or to the left, one of these guys has to get that, depending on the side the running back leaks to. Now on this one, Barkley's going to leak towards the right, and Vandress just isn't able to make the play fast enough. Now keep in mind, this was a third and four, so really the Cowboys could have gotten off the field. They could have gotten the stop. Now I know it doesn't matter because the Cowboys won the game, but these are some of the moments within the games that people are talking about that this guy's not quick enough. This guy's not making the plays. And I get all that. And I want to now show you guys why I think Van Der Esch is still a pretty damn good linebacker and why I think it makes sense to keep him on the roster as we move forward and really figure it out as DeMarvin Overshone gets healthy, as Damone Clark goes into year three of his career, and maybe even so than that, as you get a guy that you can truly rely on because Van Der Esch is pretty much healthy most of the time, right? But let's go ahead and switch focus and get into some really, really positive plays with Van Der Esch. Now, I do want to state this really quickly. Van Der Esch's best game was this Patriots game. He had a really, really good game. And I'm not sure if it was because people were questioning him a little bit, but the guy actually had a really good game. And I think he wanted to prove people wrong, possibly. And here's a great example of some of what you see from a Van Der Esch. And to me, this is part of what I really like with this guy. He understands the offensive lineman that's trying to get out in front of him. And he understands how to get over the top and how to contain the backside gap. This is perfect. You know, every player has a run fit. And in this instance, Van Der Esch has the backside fit. You can see how it kind of is with these guys, just guy off the edge here as well. And you can see within this play, Van Der Esch does his job, right? He takes on his run fit. Play does pop for about five yards. But again, you can see how Van Der Esch, from a mental perspective, understands how to get around the blocks. He understands what guys are trying to do to him. And he understands how to react and how to kind of fight through it. So these are the type of plays that you'll also get from Mandras. You may get those other plays that I showed you guys, but you'll get these plays right here as well. So this one's a nice one. Although he doesn't make the play, he does his job. Now he also made this play here. This was a really, really nice play by both Fowler and Vanderesh. Now, I think it's a better job by the defensive end because the defensive end actually wins the block and he forces the fumble. Um, and I know some people aren't going to give Vanderesh the credit he deserves on this play but i want to tell you guys it isn't as easy as just picking the ball up and running it for a touchdown you know some guys will jump on the ball and you know hug the ball and just make sure they hold on to the ball mandrich looks for the opportunity to score a touchdown All right this right here is a smart play by the linebacker not every single person is would be smart enough within this instance to kind of do that plus he also recognizes the quarterback rolling out and he naturally runs that way Right. So that's part of what allowed him to kind of get in the spot to pick the ball up. So this one's a really, really nice job, in my opinion, by Van Der Esch. Now, another thing that I think Van Der Esch does a really nice job at is playing as a true inside linebacker, as someone who really plays within the tackle box, right tackle to left tackle, everything in between. You can see it. He does a nice job being able to really navigate the, the traffic that kind of gets created. I mean, as a linebacker, you got to be able to figure out where the running back's going to go to with all of this kind of going on in front of you. And he's able to navigate that. He's able to get off that, get right where the running back is, and he's able to wrap up and bring him down, right? So I do think that Van Der still does some things very, very well. And, you know, when you shorten the field for him, you see flashes, right? Here's another example of a play in which he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the tight end. The tight end's going to leak out towards the right. And he's going to recognize it, get there, and make the play for just a game of about two to three yards. But again, when you shorten the field, right? In this instance, the linebacker knows that when Hunter Henry catches this, the boundary's right here. And really, it's not as much distance for him to cover, and he's able to kind of get there and wrap this guy up. And I do think this is part of what you can rely on Van Dress to do. I think to put him in coverage situations with tight ends, especially guys that aren't super, super quick, he will excel in that, right? I think running backs could give him issues. I think wide receivers will definitely give him issues. But when it comes to tight ends, that too, if it's towards the sideline, you can do it, right? So you see plays like this. This one's a really nice shot. Let's get into the next snap. Now, here's a really nice snap once again. He's going to recognize the screen play, and he's right there to make the play. Now, the running back is going to drop this. Uh, it's, the quarterback's not able to get it to him very cleanly. But you can see Van Der Esch do a really nice job getting off the block. Uh, you're going to see him make really nice contact with the center here. He uses the hands. 
great job getting off the block. You see that all the time. He's able to really get around, create separation. And had the running back caught this, I think the running back picks up absolutely nothing. Because I think Matt Rush blows this play up. I think from the time the ball actually hits the running back and he would turn around, Van Der Esch would be right there, and I think he would have ultimately made the tackle. Again, these type of plays where he can use his mind, where he can read, he can react, and he can kind of play loosely, I think is part of where he still does excel in. Right? You can definitely tell this guy's a smart football player with plays like this. You got another one where it's an inside run, uh, and he just has to read and react and really get there. And on this one, he gets there, right? This play right here picks up no yards. Again, just reading, reacting. All the offensive linemen are blocking down. You get guys pulling over from the right to the left. He sees it. He steps up within it. And this right here, he excels it. The guy is very, very good inside the box. And that's very clear to me. Even if you guys look at some of the snaps, you know, Van Der Esch is coming off on third downs more now than he has ever in the past. In the past, he was a true three down linebacker. This year, Dan Quinn's utilizing him less on third downs, unless it's on the line of scrimmage, right? And he does play on the line of scrimmage a lot. We know he has that package where uh, Michael Parsons will move towards the inside and Van Der Esch will line up as an outside edge player. And I think Dan Quinn is also doing that for his own purposes. He may know where Van Der Esch is in his career. And again, I don't want you guys to think that this guy can't make plays because he's still smart. He's still able to react. He's still able to get off the block. Right, He recognizes this one quickly, and he's going to get over the tight end here who's trying to chop him down, and he's able to at least fill his run fit on the backside. Right? So to me, Van Der Esch's career is not over. Obviously, if I'm giving you guys a fair evaluation, it is that he isn't the same linebacker anymore. And we'll end it with the play that we began with. Uh, he's going to make a really nice job here, just about a gain of one or two yards. But again, you can still expect this guy to do things like this. Where he understands the blocking angle, he gets over the top, he fills his run fit, and he blows the play up. So should the Cowboys move on from Mandarash? I don't think so. I don't think they have any clear replacement for him. I think they're at least one, maybe two years away from possibly moving on if they do choose to move on. It doesn't make sense at the moment. I think he's a very capable player. He may have taken a step back, but all the great ones do. And we've seen it happen with multiple people. Doesn't mean he still can't have success. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.